comes to food, and this is what also sets koalas and normal wombats apart. See, koalas are safe up a tree from predators, but wombats eat on the ground where predators are. For millions of years, what wombats have eaten have been the stuff in the forest. That's ferns, mosses, they've eaten uh, bark, they've chewed on roots that come down in their burrows, and they eat that tough, dry, hard, gnarly grass, Tasmanian native grasses, which are in the forest. Until about 200 years ago, and this stuff on the ground here is European grass, which is being introduced a couple of hundred years ago. And this grass is good for lawns, it's good for feeding sheep, it's good for feeding cows, and wombats love this stuff. It's very, yeah. You see, this grass here, it's sweet, it's soft, it's juicy. It tastes so much better than what they used to eat in the forest. And so, wombats, the grass here is like junk food. Okay, it tastes fantastic. Good, eh? But if you imagine eating chocolate all day and not having any bad effects, that's what it's like to be a wombat. They eat this soft, sweet, juicy grass all day long. They love it and they bliss out and the stuff. You see their eyes start to shut and they've got a big smile on their face as they're eating this lovely grass. Problem is it takes them out of the forest, brings them into the open plain where predators can see them. A lot of animals would love to eat a wombat and on top of the list is the Tasmanian devil. The Tasmanian devil that runs 30 kilometres an hour has fangs that can penetrate through a wombat's skull and its favourite food is wombat. Mm. See, this girl's got a little bit of a problem when she leaves us, eh? Mm. Two things I'll say about wombats. Two of their characteristic traits. One is they're procrastinators. They'll put things off to the last possible moment. If they're eating grass, nothing else matters. Okay, they don't put off any work if they're eating grass. They'll put off their own safety if they're eating grass. They won't do anything to the last possible moment because they love their grass so much. The other thing is they have a false sense of security. They're out there with a hundred of their friends, and their friends are like kangaroos and wallabies and paddy melons. All their <laughs> friends look like slim, slender, sleek speed machines, and this girl looks like a reject from Weight Watchers. Mm. See, she's got a problem. Tasmanian Devil sees her as a big sack of meat with short legs. She looks like the easy target. Now, there's two ways that a wombat should know if a Tasmanian Devil or any other predator is after them, and that is if you see that their eyes are to the side of their head. So when she's down eating, she's almost got a 360 view around her body. She should be able to see something running towards her, except she's got her eyes shut in a state of bliss eating grass. So she probably wouldn't notice. The other way that she should know is by her friends. She's out there with a hundred of her friends. They're all eating grass. There's thumping commotion. She looks up and she's all alone. <laughs> okay, they all run away because the Tasmanian devil's after them. Well, a smart wombat should look up at this stage and see this creature closing in at 30 kilometres an hour, black and white with big sharp teeth salivating, the Tasmanian devil. And it's interesting what wombats do at this stage. What nearly all wombats do at this point is they start eating faster. <laughs> yeah, they, they put things off to the last moment. They're going to get in as much grass as they can before the devil comes any closer. They can see a problem coming. They know they're going to have to do something about it, but before they do, they're going to get in as much grass as they possibly can. When it gets very dangerous, when the devil's almost upon the wombat, they run 40 kilometres an hour. So they run faster than a Tasmanian devil, that's defence number one. They gallop like a horse. Defence number two, because they can't keep that speed up for very long, they run down a hole. The wombat burrow, because devil's got great endurance and will catch that wombat eventually. The wombat runs down the hole, but that, just running down a hole is not a good defence against the devil, because the average size of a wombat is about three feet in length, about... 90 centimetres, weighing about 20 to 25 kilograms. That's twice the size of a Tasmanian devil. Devils can easily get down a hole. Out of interest, the maximum size for a male wombat after five years of age can be up to four feet in length. That's a metre 20 and well over 20, 35 kilograms in weight. So that's about three, four times larger than a devil. Devils easily get down there. The defence for a wombat once it's down the hole is to change its body shape a little bit, scrunch its body up. The earth is not going to do this for me. Hide there. That's all right. They scrunch their bodies up so 
when the devil comes down the hole, just sees a big furry wall. Now in here, the hip bones come together to form a plate, a shield. That is covered by cartilage. Cartilage is like that stuff in your nose, it's like a rubber bone. So it's got like a thick rubber bone covering that shield, very little nerve endings, it's... Oh my gosh. You can put a warm back to sleep doing that. It doesn't bother her at all. Awesome. That's a brilliant self-defense against almost any predator except for the Tasmanian Devil. The Tasmanian Devil eats bone, cartilage and anything else on offer here. So you can see, you know, little wombat's got a bit of a problem. The wombat will try and bluff its way out. They'll growl, they'll burr inside the burrow and doing that it echoes through the burrow. The burrow makes, uh, amplifies the noise. But still that's not enough to put off a Tasmanian Devil. Devil's mother growls louder than that by far. So the devil will probably keep going in, going to have a bit of a sniff around here, maybe want to have a bit of a nibble. Now the wombat's got another form of self-defense. You see it at the moment she's scrunched up and that's sort of upright. She'll also flatten out the other way. If I give her a cuddle, she's relax, girl. There we go, look at that. See the back end flat? So the back end can do that. They can scrunch up like that to form a wall inside the burrow they can flatten out like a doormat. So when the devil comes and sniffs around the back end, they'd slip it down under the chin of the devil and go bam, 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 a series of uppercuts under the chin in a confined space. There's nowhere for the devil's head to go, but the roof of the burrow, crunch, crunch, crunch. That's a real headache for a Tasmanian devil. Can't get past that. And that's why we still have wombats in the world. Otherwise, it'll be eaten by devils. Once down their burrow, they can use that back end here as a self-defense.